Hi guys, today I'm excited because I have some new Dollar Tree fall DIYs to share with you today. I absolutely love these and I hope that you love them too. I also am collabing with Emily from Mama From Scratch. She is sharing some fall DIYs with you as well. I adore Emily. She has some of the best like high-end dupes, knockoffs, whatever you want to call them. You know, when you find something that costs a lot of money and you can make it for a whole lot less, yep. Emily is your girl to check that out. She also does some good like room makeovers, things like that. So if for some reason you have not seen her video yet, make sure you go over to her channel, watch her video. I'm mean, gonna have her video linked in my description box so that you can do that very thing. Now, if you are coming over from Emily's, hello and welcome. My name is Jennifer and this is a little bit of Calm and Crazy. If you enjoy what you see here today, I hope you will hit that subscribe button and let's get into it. For this project, I am using one of the Dollar Tree mats as my base. I have a Dollar Tree pumpkin, some contact paper, some white spray paint, and some stickers. Using the stickers, I went ahead and I spelled out Hello Pumpkin on the bottom corner. Now, you could spell out Hello Pumpkin or you could do like Fall Y'all or Hello Fall or It's Fall or Fall's Best of All. Whatever you want, just have fun with it. After that, I traced out the pumpkin on the contact paper. Now, I did have to remove the leaf in order to trace it out all the way. If you're good at eyeballing, you wouldn't have to do that. Now, I will tell you, if you don't care about protecting this pumpkin, you can completely skip this step because you could, if you wanted to have a white pumpkin, you could do two for one and go ahead and spray paint this white at the same time that you are spray painting your mat. Once you traced your pumpkin on the back of the contact paper, go ahead and cut that out, and then you are gonna separate the contact paper from the backing. Now, the contact paper itself will not stick on the mat very well. The edges kind of curl up, and so you can't just use the contact paper by itself. You're going to need to use the pumpkin. Trust me. Also remember, if you already have another pumpkin shape lying around, don't feel like you need to run out to the store to get this very pumpkin. Use what you have. So I put the contact paper on the pumpkin to protect the pumpkin, but if you want the pumpkin to be white, don't put the contact paper on it, and then you can go ahead and get like two for one projects going on when you go in to spray paint. Once you have everything laid out, then you can go in with your spray paint. I love the Rust-Oleum Ultra Matte White. That's my favorite white spray paint. I always think it has beautiful coverage. I just go in and I give it what I consider like a light dusting and it does a beautiful job. I've done, I just, I just did a Christmas mat a couple videos back. I love the way it looked and I knew that I needed to do a fall mat as well. So I'm using my fingers and some tweezers in order to remove the stickers. After I let the paint dry, I want to be able to use these stickers in another project. So that's a pro tip for you. Always be looking out for what you can do with items for a future project. And I love that these stickers are now white. Also that transfer or that contact paper did a fantastic job of protecting that protecting the pumpkin. Now let me show you how I clean up my lines to finish off this mat. I am simply just using a gray sharpie in order to clean up my lines and cover up any areas that may have gotten a little bit of white where I didn't want it. If you were using a black mat, you could go in with a black sharpie instead. But I love how this mat turned out. It's such an easy and quick project to do. Now I will tell you that this will not last like five, 10 years, but no mat that I have paid more money for has lasted that long either. So I adore this project. For this quick floral arrangement, I'm using some warm tone and cool tone florals from the Dollar Tree as well as this beautiful cool tone vase that I got from the Dollar Tree as well. So I'm really loving the green that is super popular this year, and I, but I want to be able to incorporate it with some of the more traditional colors because I have a lot of that. So I'm starting off with this vase and this floral pick both from the Dollar Tree that I absolutely am loving. And now I'm going in with these warmer traditional colors. So from this floral pick, I have two of these and I just wanted the berries with this long kind of wheat-like grassy stuff that comes off of these. Um, I just liked it and I felt like the berries 
complemented more of the blue green berries that came off of that pick. So I'm gonna add a couple of those. And then I'm going in with this hot fish that is in this orange color and I'm gonna use my wire cutters, clip those off and add those in. And I'm just arranging everything so it doesn't look like every, it looks like everything's kind of arranged. I'm like mixing them in between the picks until I have the look that I want. Once I have everything arranged the way I want, I just take a piece of raffia, I take it and I wrap it around about three different times and then I tie it off into a bow. And now I have a beautiful fall arrangement that helps me combine the colors, the new colors that I want this year with the traditional colors that I've had for a while. Here are the supplies that I'm using for this project. I have an eight x 10 canvas, some wood stems. I will be using both my hot glue gun and stapler. I have a couple of pumpkins, one of which is part of a pumpkin pick, but I'm only gonna be using the pumpkin and a couple of colors of the Waverly chalk paint. To start off with, I am taking my miter shears in order to cut my wood stems so that I can spell out the word fall. So I take one of the wood stems and I just cut it in half so that I can finish spelling out or finish with my letter F. Then I'm gonna take another one and I'm gonna trim off just a small piece, not quite even half for my A. And then I will also take another piece to be the ends of both of my L. And it's super simple. I love these miter shears. They have come super handy. For the canvas, I always like to actually expose the frame that is underneath. It's one of my favorite parts. And so I like to go in with my craft knife and remove the canvas itself. I don't even try to bother with the staples. I have found it's just not worth it for me personally. So this is just the easier way for me to do it. I just go around, I cut the canvas off and then I'll go in with a pair of pliers and actually get the extra canvas just so it's not on there. I also like the underneath part of the canvas. It's more of an oatmeal color and that's the side I tend to use most often. Once I have the canvas removed from the frame, I do go in with my rotary cutter and a ruler and I cut just inside the, of the like indented lines that are on there because I will be reattaching that onto the canvas itself. And here, like I said, I mentioned, I used the pliers to get that extra canvas off. Now, before I plat attach the canvas back on, I do want to go ahead and paint the canvas. I'm going in with some of the Waverly chalk paint and ink, and I watered it down quite a bit, and I almost want it to be more of a stain. So I'm brushing it on and wiping it off because I want a little bit of that natural wood to still come through. And so it's, just a very light painting because you can still see it. I did not want it to be super deep and intense. Once the paint had dried, now it is time for me to go ahead and attach the canvas back onto the frame. Again, I like to use more of the oatmeal side, so I have that side facing the frame itself, and I'm just using my staple gun in order to attach that. This is a Sherbonder one. I have used a couple different ones, but this is by far my favorite one, and I love it. So I always attach my top and then my bottom and my sides and then I do my corners and then I fill in around the side just to make sure that it is secure every which way. So for the pumpkins, I'm gonna be slicing them in half. So I do, do need to remove the little clip from the one and then the other one from the pick. I also need to remove the stems. So I'm using my box cutter and just slicing them in half. After that, I go ahead and I'm painting them with the Waverly chalk paint in moss. I do give them a couple coats of that until I am satisfied. Moss is like my new favorite color for this fall that I actually think is a beautiful color all year round. Now, once I have them all done, I did grab a couple stems or sticks from my yard in order to replace the stems for these pumpkins. Now I'm gonna go in and I'm securing everything down with hot glue. So I put the pumpkins down first, the larger one in the middle and the two smaller ones on the outside, including their new stick stems. And then I'm using, putting down the word fall above that. If you can't find these sticks at the Dollar Tree, you might actually have some in your own yard and that's even free. The last thing I did was add a little raffia bow to that center pumpkin and this sign was all done. I absolutely think it's super cute, rustic, but I love it. 
For this project, I'm using this super cute little wooden truck from the Dollar Tree. I am also gonna be using some vinyl cutouts. I used Design Space in order to create a super cute little design. I will have this link down below. I also included the truck in case you wanted to stick with all vinyl. However, if you don't have a Cricut or any sort of cutout, you can use stencils or stickers. If you use stickers, I would suggest that you use Mod Podge to make sure that they stay down. I used all Waverly paint for this project. I'm using Waverly's chalk paint in pumpkin, white, ink, and elephant, and then Waverly's wax and antique. Off with Waverly's chalk paint and ink, which is their black chalk paint. I am painting the entire main part of the truck as well as the tires themselves. I then mix a little bit of the elephant, which is the gray, with some white and water, and I painted the fenders as well as the wheel rims, wheel, the center part of the tires. I painted those with that lighter shade of gray. So I took a little bit of pumpkin, which is the orange, with the white. I mixed those together with some water as well, brushed those across the entire two pumpkins, but I wanted to deep them up, deepen them up and add a little bit more contrast to them. So some of the pumpkin that I hadn't touched yet, I mixed with some of the gray, and then I brushed that around the edges, making sure that I also got some right there on the stems to deepen that up as well. So here I am gonna use the antique wax again, mixed with water on the truck rail, more like a stain, but it dries faster than a stain. I'm just gonna brush it on, and then I just take a clean cloth and wipe off the excess, and all the painting of the truck is done. For the base of my sign, I'm using an old cabinet door. I picked this up at the Habitat for Humanity rehab store. It was $2. You can't beat that price, but if you don't have something like that on hand, you can also take a couple of Dollar Tree signs and attach them together also for $2. To prep my door, I do remove the hinges just by using a screwdriver and then I take it outside and I sand. I sand both sides of it because I am gonna actually be creating a double-sided sign. You guys, if you don't have an electric sander, this is one investment that I would highly suggest looking into getting. It makes life so much easier. Before I start painting, I do wanna go ahead and fill in my holes from where my hinges were, so I'm just using some wood filler. I like this one because it starts off pink and then when it is its natural brown state, I know it's dry, and then I can go in and just sand it smooth and begin painting my cabinet door, which is now my sign. I'm keeping this super simple. On the edges, I'm going in with ink, which is the black, and I'm just doing some dry brushing. I'm wanting the wood to still come through, and I'm actually dabbing off a lot of the paint, and I'm just getting it as much coverage as I want, going back where I think it might need it, but I'm not being like super picky and I'm definitely not doing full coverage. I am also dry brushing in the center of the sign, this time with the white. Again, I don't want full coverage. I want the natural wood to come through and I'm just putting this on and getting as much coverage as I want, just really being pretty rough about it and not being perfect about it. After all the paint had dried, I did go in with a 220 grit sandpaper. I made sure that my paint was nice and, nice and smooth. And if I happened to get a little extra paint in one area, then I just sanded that area just a little more than I did in other spots. Like I said in the beginning, I used my Cricut in order to cut the vinyl and to create this sign. But if you don't have a Cricut, don't feel like you need to get one. I do think it is a fantastic investment. I love using my Cricut, but you can use stencils or stickers. But if you do have a Cricut, don't forget to check the description box. I do have a link to this vinyl cutout so that you can also use it. I would love to know if you would have put something different on your sign other, other than the Fresh Farm Pumpkins Pick Your Own Hay Rides and Apple Cider. So the very last thing I needed to do to complete the sign was I used some wood glue in order to attach the truck to the sign itself. And then this side of the sign was done. I absolutely love this. I did a little truck last year and I have to tell you, I like this one even better. For the reverse of my sign, I'm using this witch in a cauldron to create a Christmas sign. You will need something to cut your sign. I'm also using more Waverly chalk paint. I left off the color elephant, and I'm using a Sharpie as well. 
To start off with, I'm removing the banner from the center of the cauldron. You want to use something that that is firm and skinny to get right underneath there. And I love this painter, paint scraper that you can pick up at the Dollar Tree. Now it will leave a little bit of damage behind, but don't worry, we will be putting this back on. And so you won't notice it, but you do want to be as careful as possible. Now with a metal square ruler and a utility knife, I am trimming the side of my cauldron to create the chimney. And you just take it and you just, go back and forth until it is scored. On the first side, I ended up having to flip it over and score on the other side as well. On the other side, I just went a couple times and it snapped right off. So just be patient with it. I promise it will come off. I love this metal um, square wheeler that you can get at the Dollar Tree because it comes in so handy. It is one of my favorite tools to have in my kit. I did go ahead and fill in the holes from where this is supposed to hang with some wood fillers because I would not be hanging this and I did not want those holes to be obvious later on. So I'm mixing a little bit of Waverly's chalk paint and white and elephant to come up with a lighter gray and I'm using that to paint my chimney. Now I go ahead and I also paint the elves boots with this but honestly I changed that in the end so you can ignore that for right now. For the elf shirt, I wanted to give it like a scalloped edge, so I'm just using the bottom of a dowel stick in order to create little circles. Now you do wanna make sure that the dowel stick is completely covered, but I'm not too worried about the top circle, and I'm not actually too worried about the thickness of the paint either because it would just add more texture, kinda of like clothing has different textures. I'm not too worried about being flat, but these will get messed up in just a minute when I go to fix his tights, and so you'll see in a minute or you'll see it a little bit, that I have to do that step again. But honestly, if I were to redo it, I'd probably still just do it twice anyway. I then finished painting out the rest of his little shirt. Like I already mentioned, I painted the boots gray, but honestly, this is just kind of giving you a place to stop where you're doing the tights because the boots are about to get a whole new makeover in a minute. So I started by laying tape down to do the tights and then I decided I didn't actually like that look. It was too refined and too stiff looking. I actually liked the way it looked when you just went in with a brush and free handed it. So I went in first and I did all the white stripes and just kind of eyeballed the distance. They're not exact, they're not the same and I personally like that look better. And honestly, I thought it looked a little bit more whimsical. So I did all the white stripes and then I went back in and I filled in the red stripes. I think that's easier because red covers white easier than white covers red. Like I said, I lost a little bit of that scalloping when I went in with the white. So I went back in with the dowel rod and the green paint and I fixed it. And I think that it looks absolutely cute and adorable. To give the chimney more of a brick look, I'm going in both with Waverly's Elephant, leaving it the way it is, not making it lighter, and with the white chalk paint. So first I'm starting off with Elephant, and this is just a regular makeup sponge, and I'm just dabbing it on in random spots, some a little heavier than others, some a little bit lighter, just being random with it. And then I go in with the white and I do the exact same thing. Once it completely dries, I'm going in with, again, that T-square ruler and my Sharpie and I'm drawing out lines. First, I'm drawing my vertical lines and I am spacing them out half an inch in between. After that, I go in and I do my horizontal lines and I'm going in with a brick pattern. So I'm making sure that my lines are not stacked up on one on top of each other. So every other line, will match the line that is two below it. I hope that is making sense. If you don't verbally understand me, hopefully visually, you will see exactly what it is that I'm talking about. This is when I knew I needed a little bit more surgery to make sure that this little elf looked like an elf and not like a witch. So I am using the side that I cut off from the cauldron as a guide to cut the curve around the boot so they look a little bit more like elf shoes. So going back in with that utility knife, and I'm just creating that curve shape so that I could cut that hill off. Now, I did think about trying to pop those little buckly looking things off, but it was gonna split my wood. So instead, you'll see what I do. I'm just gonna add a couple pom-poms in at the very end to cover those up. But I also needed these to be green. 
So I went in with that same green that I used on the shirt and that made all the difference. This is looking so much more like an elf and not like a witch. For the banner, I took a little bit of the Waverly chalk paint in white and mixed in a little bit of water and gave that banner just a nice little white wash so that it was just ever so slightly tinted in that white. So for the main trim, I'm going in with Waverly's Crimson and I'm taking that all around the edges. After that, I'm going in with Waverly's White and I'm painting the center. I did notice when I was painting the white that the tannins, that's kind of that orangey color of the wood was coming through. So when it dried, I went out and I used some shellac and I gave it a couple coats of that and that will keep those from bleeding through. And then I could paint the white on there and I would no longer have any bleed through. Once the red and white were dry, I taped everything off. I painted green on the smaller trim of the green, on the trim sections, painted green on the smaller trim, green. Oh, you got that, right? Anyway, I painted green. Then when everything was dried, I went in with a 220 grit sandpaper and I did a light sanding just to distress it ever so slightly. And then that was all painted and I could add all the good stuff. I used my Cricut to cut out vinyl again for this side of the sign and also, I have this link down in the description box if you would like to use it as well. So the top half of the sign says this house is under and then on the banner that is going on the chimney, I have elf surveillance. I think that is so super cute and I'm really proud of myself because I curved the elf surveillance to fit on that banner so perfectly. Now in order to attach everything down, I went in with wood glue. Now. I did not like the fact that the chimney was not level with the feet, so I went in with that little cauldron piece that I cut off earlier and attached that to the bottom of the chimney before attaching it down onto the sign. Once I had the elf attached to the sign, I went ahead and placed the banner back onto the sign, also using some wood glue. And then I just used some fuller paint bottles to help hold that down while the paint was setting up and drying. Once it was all set up and dried, I went in with a couple of white pom-poms to finish off my little elf and my hot glue gun, and I think that these were the perfect added touch to finish off my little elf. I think this sign is a so stinking darling. I am loving it. Every time I look at it, it just makes me smile. I absolutely love that it is double-sided. Here's another fall video that I think you would enjoy. Thank you so much, Emily, for collabing with me today. If you haven't already seen her video, make sure that you go check that link out in my description box, and I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye.